morning welcome to choose life i'm pastor gina coleman happy fourth of july what y'all doing today y'all going out and make some barbecue are you going to a barbecue whatever you do be safe make sure you choose life today make sure you're careful of your surroundings when you're in a large large crowd at least this is what i do when i go to some place and there's lots of people i pray I mean, I pray wherever I go, but when it's lots of people, I pray because of the past sneak attacks of the enemy on people in large crowds. I always pray. So take that little nugget. Always pray wherever you go. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and um, wait a minute. Welcome to Choose Life. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and pray and get into the video. Father, we praise you. We thank you for this beautiful day we thank you for this day prepared with new mercy we thank you for this day that's prepared with grace we thank you for this day that's prepared with goodness and mercy following us we thank you for this day that you are have gone before us and you are with us we thank you for the holy spirit that's in us we thank you for jesus christ the hope of glory that's in us we magnify you lord god that you are available to us every day all day we thank you lord god that you never leave us nor forsake us we thank you father god for our independence that was bought by jesus christ jesus paid the price for us that we could be independent of sin independent of death and destruction we thank you that jesus um, purchased a new way of life for us in the name of jesus so we magnify you and we honor you this morning and father i pray this morning that wherever we go um, today, if we should go out today, I ask that you would keep your hand upon us, make us aware of our surroundings, protect us in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I welcome you. We welcome you this morning and I commit this video into your hand. In Jesus name, we ask all these things. Amen. All right. So it's 4th of July. What y'all like to eat on the 4th of July? Hamburgers, hot dogs, ribs, beef, pork. What y'all like to eat? <laughs> Whatever you like to eat, enjoy yourself. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and get into the message. The message for July 4th says this. We're in this thing. We're in this together. I'm all cool. We're in this thing together. But it says we're in this together. It says, I will. We are co-laborers. I will never leave you alone in the battle to establish God's will in the earth. I'll always lead you on the best possible path even if it means taking you on a long journey through the wilderness, <laughs> even if it means leading you through the spiritual warfare, even if it means hiding myself from you so that you feel as if you can't sense me, my presence, or hear my voice. I am committed to you. I dedic I'm dedicated to you. We're in this together. Never think anything different. I'm here to say, you have my word. And the last sentence says, I love you. That should be refreshing. Um, it's nice to hear when God says that he loves us, even if it's through a book or someone sends a word that says, God says that he loves you. So the word of the Lord says, we're in this together. And for sure, we are in it with the Holy Spirit. For sure, we're in it with the Holy Spirit. He is with us and God has caused him to come and live inside of us and he will never leave us nor forsake us. When I was reading this earlier, I got a little, I'm not sure what you call it, but like a little nervousness or anxiousness inside when <laughs> the part of the message said that, um, let me just read it. I'm like, oh, ooh, don't take me that way, Lord. <laughs> and I'm sure once I read it, you'll feel the same way. Can we go another way? It says, um, I'll always lead you on the best possible path, even if it means taking you on a long journey through the wilderness. When I first read that, I felt like a little twinge in my heart, like, not that way, please, Father. <laughs> but you know what? When you um, are on a camping trip or some place where you don't know where you're going, but the person that's leading you know where they're going, there's a sense of comfort there, right? And so 
that's what the Lord wants us to um, feel about him and trust about him. We don't know where we're going, but he knows where we're going. And even if he has to lead us through a long journey <laughs> through the wilderness, he is with us and he is with us always. And um, we are in it together or he, he's in it with us, right? And also what I'm thinking about is the Holy Spirit is telling us, the Lord is telling us through this book that we're in this thing together. But are we confident enough are we sure enough that no matter what comes or go god is in it with us and we're in it with him you know the lord is faithful but are we faithful to the lord if the lord should lead us on a long journey in the wilderness will we stay there or will we like be like the children of israel will we trust that that which he promised he's going to bring to pass or are we going to murmur complain want to return and go back the other way like the children of israel well we're going to be smarter than the children of israel <laughs> they showed us what not to do not to murmur not to complain and they cho showed us that we should trust god they didn't but we should trust god so that's who, who we're going to be we're going to learn from their examples we don't need to experience anything by ourselves we're just going to trust that when the lord brings us out of a place and into a place he is with us and he will not leave us he will not drop us and then it says that he will um let me just read this again because i want to be um careful to read the right thing it also says um even if it means hiding myself from you so that you feel as if you can sense my presence or hear my voice. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> it's amazing some of the things the Lord um, does for us and does with us. Uh, I'm really sorry about the lighting too. It's just kind of off, but it's the weather. There's nothing I could do about it. But anyway, um, do you ever feel like God hides from you you can't hear him you can't trace him you don't feel him in when you worship but you know what he's there he's always there and i think in those times when we can't feel the lord he's not talking back we're reading a word and not really getting the understanding that we need i think god does that so that we can pursue him more i mean think about it if you couldn't find your husband or your children, you're not hearing them, you're calling them, they're not responding, you're not going to give up, are you? You're going to keep looking for them. You're going to pursue them. So that's one of those things I think right there, the Lord wants us to pursue him and trust that he's there when we cannot um, feel him, hear him. I know sometimes we get frantic, like, God, where are you? <laughs> Is God listening? But he is listening. He is listening. And I believe that um, our walk, in our walk, God is always building us. He's always building us because, you know, he longs to be with us. This lighting is really off, y'all. Sorry. He longs to be with us. And he wants us, I'm trying to fix the lighting. He wants us to put our confidence in him. By George, I think that's better <laughs> as far as the lighting goes. Yeah, so he wants us to put our confidence in, in, um, in him and for us to remember that even when we can't feel him and even when we have to go on a long journey through the wilderness, he is in it with us. He's right there with us. He's right there with us. And that's where he wants us to rest in confidence that he is with us. What y'all think? Yes, he is with us. <laughs> All right, let's see what it says over here. He said in the word, I'm committed to you. Can we say that about the Lord or to the Lord? Lord, I'm committed. I'm committed. No matter what's happening, I am committed. I'm committed. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all see me trying to get this lighting together. I'm committed to you. So we know that the Lord is committed to us. We must commit ourselves to him through the journey, the long journey that we don't know what's going on but decide i'm committed through the painful times in life i'm committed you know love is more about commitment than it is about feelings and emotions 
um, the Lord knew that in love, let's just say for marriage, in a marriage or friendship or whatever, you have to be committed to stay in there because feelings and emotions, they go up and down um, for us humans. But with the Lord, he's already committed to us no matter what we do, how things go for us. He's committed to us. And so he wants us to know that he's committed. And I'm saying to us, are we committed? Are we committed to him? Will we, like I said earlier, will we run and say, I believe in this wilderness. <laughs> I'm going back with Pharaoh because at least we had, because that's how we are at sometimes that people when the Lord has to take us through a long journey. But I will put on the screen, I'm committed. And I want you to say to yourself, I'm committed no matter what happens, I'm committed to the one who's committed to me, to the one who's faithful to me, to the one that will never leave me nor forsake me. I am committed to that one. Yes, that's the only one you can be committed to is the Lord. Everybody else will leave and forsake you, whether they mean it or not. They'll let you down just because of the humanness. But the Lord is saying he is in this with us. We are not alone. We're not alone at all. It feels like it at times, but we're not alone. And I think that's a part of the process because I called someone um, a few weeks ago and I was saying, um, I feel like nothing is happening. I feel this and I feel that. And they said, you know what? That's just how it is. They said that uh, most people or all people really in a walk with Christ feel that way. Like I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. Nothing is really happening. It's just part of the process. So stay committed to God as he is committed to you and I. All right. I'm going to pick up the book and see if there's anything that I, else I want to extract, and extract from here and see. He said, I will always lead you on the best possible path. The best possible path. Now, we already know that the, the Lord has the best path. He's always has the best path for us. Not the one that's possible. The best path. It may not feel like the best, but it's the best path. And y'all look, I'm sitting here with my robe on. Let me take you off. I thank God for his love, his grace, <laughs> and his mercy. I just noticed that um, when I looked in the, in the screen, I'm like, oh, wait, I still have my robe on. But. You know, I just had my robe on. It's off now. <laughs> so yes, the Lord will take us on the best po best possible path because he knows the way in which we should take. So I'm going to go ahead and read the first scripture. Why y'all ain't tell me? You got your robe on. Just kidding. All right. So the first scripture is 1 Corinthians 3, 9. 1 Corinthians 3, 9 says, For we are co-workers in God's service, you are God's field, God's building. So we don't have to um, really be concerned about help, concerned about anything because we're co-workers. It's a privilege for us to be working alongside the Lord. God is, it said this is God's field and God's business. That means we're coming along aside the Lord, uh, beside the Lord and um, working in his field and working in, in his building and working in his kingdom. So we don't have to worry about um, the Lord not being there because it's his project. It's his project. If I'm in charge of something and, and I invite you along to help me, and for some reason you decide you don't want to help me, I'm not going to quit my, my project. I'm going to continue on with my project and my vision. And so that's how we can look at the Lord. It's his thing. It's his thing that, you know, he uh, drew us into the family, drew us into the kingdom, but it's his thing. And he's not going to forsake the work that he started in us or in um, in the kingdom. So we can just go ahead and relax and trust that God is with us. He's with us. This is his business, right? This is his business. So relax. God is with us. God is with us. He is in this thing with us together, together. He will not, he will not leave us nor forsake us to go ahead and, and build it. We have no wisdom and no knowledge on how to build or how to do the things of God. We have none. So we need to know when, when, when things get difficult, God is with me and we could cry out to him and talk to him. Even if he doesn't talk back, because eventually he's going to say something back to us through a word, through the scriptures, through sending somebody, eventually he's going to say something back to us. But he wants us to get to the place where we know 
We're in this together. We are co-laborers, co-workers with the Lord. Now, he's not like those other co-workers at work. They only have doing their job or if you quit, uh, they quit or vice versa. No, he's going to stay in it because this is his building, his project, his kingdom, right? We're just coming alongside of him and assisting him. And for sure, he will hold us up. So the thing that he has planned to come our way um, to be accomplished will be accomplished. Say la. <laughs> I'm still shocked, y'all. I had my robe on. Why y'all ain't tell me? <laughs> All right. Okay. Here we go. The next scripture is 2 Corinthians 6 1. All right. 2 Corinthians 6 1 says this right here. It says, as God's co workers, let me back up. We urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. We urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. So the, really what that means is that we are, being, we are being urged by the Lord not to receive it in vain. Know that the grace of God is to work alongside of him. Work and do. Grace um, is a period of time to get things together and to do something. It's an ability to do. So know that um, we have, uh, as God's co-workers, um, we are being urged not to receive it in vain, uh, to meaning to the purpose of nothingness, but to the purpose of to do something, to do what the Lord has called us to do, because we are in this thing together. We're into this thing together. Even when um, the Lord was with the children of Israel in the wilderness, they didn't know he was with them, but Moses knew. Moses knew that he was with him and with them and Moses trusted him to bring forth the promise. Right. But the children of Israel were so busy murmuring and complaining and wanting to go back to their old ways. They missed that God, the creator of the universe, was with them to bring them out. And even in the midst of all of that, he provided for them. Right. Whatever they wanted, he provided or needed. They provided. And so the same thing is with us. The Lord is with us to provide our needs, to under, to speak to us, to help us to get understanding, to lead us and guide us in those difficult times, to be the cloud by day and the fire by night that we need. So remember it said in the, in the word that when we can't hear him, he may hide and we can't hear him. We don't sense his presence. That we have to have a knowing that God is with us. And even if he doesn't speak, keep talking to him because he definitely hears. He hears the stuff that we're not supposed to say. He hears the stuff that, that we're only talking in our heart. So don't leave, don't receive um, the grace of God in vain. That means do something because he's with you. <laughs> All right. And the last scripture is Hebrews I'm going to leave this one to you read because it's kind of long. I just noticed it is Hebrews 6, 13 through 20. Hebrews 6, 13, 13 through 20. So yes, that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to know that he is with us. We are in this thing together. We, we should have one mind. Well, the Holy Spirit does. But we should have one mind, one purpose, and one cause for the kingdom of God um, to prevail and the things that God wants us to do to prevail. And the Holy Spirit is here to help us to get to those places. And it may not be an easy road. It wasn't an easy road for the uh, children of Israel in the wilderness, but it was a sure road. And it was a way that God wanted them to go. Um, and he was with them. So our roads may not be easy, but it will be a sure way. It will be, the word says that it's going to be the best uh, way possible. For sure, it's going to be the best way possible. It's going to be the only way. It's going to be the only way. And it has at the end an expected end. Right? There was, um, <clears throat> there's the, the children of Israel should have had an expectation of what the Lord had promised them in the beginning, right? No matter how much they went in the wilderness and went through in the wilderness, the expected end was the promised land. And so with us, no matter what we go through, one, the Lord is with us in the midst of the enemy attacking, in the midst of um, being hungry. These are the things that the children of Israel went through, being in the midst of being thirsty, um, being in the midst of just... Wanting to go back, but no, you have to go forward. 
right? Um, maybe not you, hopefully not us, murmuring and complaining. The Lord is with us and he showed up for them every single time, every single time. But they they were never satisfied with, with what the Lord was giving them um, through Moses and Aaron. But we want to be satisfied and we want to relax and trust that the Lord is with us and um, we're in this thing together. That's what the message says. We're in this t- together. And maybe um, if the children of Israel could have heard it just like that, maybe, maybe, who knows, they would have um, come out a little better. But I don't really know. But just maybe, right? So I want to encourage you that wherever you are right now, good or bad, um, difficult, not so difficult, God is with you. He's in it right there with you. And we don't need to murmur, complain, run back the other way, be fearful of anything because the Lord, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God, they're all together with us for the end that he has planned for us. They're not going to um, take us so many miles and then drop us off. They're not. They're going to take us all the way to the end so we can put our faith and our hope and our confidence in that the Holy Spirit is in, in it with us. We're not alone ever, ever. We're never alone. So I'm going to go ahead and pray the prayer. Thank you for counting me worthy to serve as an ambassador for Christ, a co laborer for your kingdom, and for giving me the strength to walk on the path you've designed for me despite the resistance. Help me to walk in your perfect will. Father, we pray and we glorify and we magnify you. We thank you so much, Lord God, that you are in it with us. When the enemy comes up against us um, to eat of our flesh, God, we thank you. You caused them to stumble because you are with us. When everything seems dark and we have no idea what to do, we thank you that you are with us. We thank you that you're in it with us. You're in it. We're in it together. We're You're the leader and we're the followers. And I thank you, Lord, as, as you prepare the promised land for the children of Israel, you have promised a promised land for us. And maybe not be like the children of Israel to murmur and to c- complain and want to go back to our old ways, but that we will keep our eyes on the cloud by day and the fire by night, Lord God, that we keep our eyes focused on you. No matter what journey you take us through, Lord, let us always remember to come back to you, Father, whether we can feel you, hear you or not. Let our confidence be in you. Help us to be rooted and grounded in trust and faith that no matter what comes up against us, Lord, you are in it with us, Father God. We thank you that even though, God, Daniel was in the lion's den, got thrown in the lion's den, and the um, Hebrew boys got thrown in the fire, with them you were. And so as you were with them, you will be with us in the name of Jesus. So we bless you, we praise you, and we magnify you, and we will take the grace that you have given us and work and work as co-workers with you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. So we extol you. We love you. We give you praise. We magnify you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you that you're in it with us. Highs, you're with us. Lows, you're with the confusion. You're with us. Don't know which way to go. You are with us. So we thank you, Lord God, that you have not left us. You will never leave us. And we bless you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. God bless you all. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. Next time, tell me about that (laughs) rope. I'm just kidding, but um, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Choose life.